police reform, and this is something that's been a big topic for the past couple of years. And I mean, like, we've had lots of conversations since George Floyd. We've had lots of conversations since Dante Wright. And at the end of the day, I think that it makes logical sense to look and analyze the situation. If we're dispatching a police officer to self, to an unhoused person, is that an effective way to use resources? Or would it make more sense to get a care team with trained social workers to that person, get them to a shelter. If they don't want to get to a shelter, give them supplies, give them a blanket, give them, give, give them tools to actually live, to actually have basic necessities. You know what I mean? So that's, and that's something that I had this discussion with time and time, time after the campaign was that cost efficiency, you know what I mean? And this is something that's ironic because, you know, I, I would, you would think conservatives, especially when they talk about tightening the budget, tightening your belts, they would talk about the police budget, but time and time after again, no one's talked about the police budget. And in the past uh, four years under the past city council, the police budget increased 28%. And you know what I mean? And it was actually scheduled to increase another, I think, Three percent, but uh, luckily, what's called the uh, what's called uh, the other really strong police candidate in the, uh, what's called in this district, uh, Ward Five Sale, Michael Jans, actually really led the charge on it, and he was actually able to convince most of council to uh, agree to uh, they they basically they defunded the free, the increase, so they didn't defund the police, and this is something that's a very highly mis conception <laughs> and mm-hmm. actually ironically they ended up giving the police an, an extra million dollars too but at the end of the day at least they got somewhere <laughs> you know mm-hmm. you got to settle somewhere i guess 